Hello everyone, and welcome to the Force of Kinetic Friction Post Lab. So, in this lab we were trying to figure out if there was a relationship between the force of kinetic friction, which we measured in newtons, and the normal force, or the support force, right, from the surfaces, uh, also in newtons. And so you uh, did a bunch of different normal forces by adding masses to the trays, right, and then measured the force of kinetic friction thanks to a setup where it was being pulled at constant velocity, and therefore the force that was read on the force probe was equal and balanced out the force on friction. And when you did that, you got a graph that looked, I hope, somewhat like this. Now, this data maybe wasn't as clean as we've seen in some of our labs. That's because there was some error here. Um, friction is just a hard animal to, to deal with. Okay, um, There was a lot of slip stick going on where the bottom of the tray would alternately slip and stick with the surface, and so you got a lot of kind of bouncing around. And we took an average of a lot of points, but even so, it's still hard to get really perfect data here. Okay, But close enough that I think you still got a 0.99 something kind of uh, correlation coefficient. So this graph was in fact linear and went through 0, 0. And therefore we can say that yes, there was a relationship and that relationship was that the force of kinetic friction is proportional to the normal force. So if you have twice the normal force, the surface is supported twice as much, you'll get twice as much friction. Right? Do this, just kind of rub your hands together. Rub your hands together. Now press them together harder and rub. Do you feel more friction? Definitely gets warmer, right? Faster. So that's just an example of normal force affecting the amount of friction. You're pressing those uh, surface molecules closer to one another so they interact more. Let's make a math model out of this wonderful linear graph. Y equals mx plus b, of course. The y variable, what we graphed on the vertical axis, is the force of kinetic friction. And that equals your slope. Now, as we're going to talk about momentarily, depending on uh, which surface you had, you might have different slopes. So I'm not going to write out two equations. I'm just going to put a number symbol here. But you write in your slope, right, that you got from your lab. Units for this so that we can interpret, rise over run. Units of rise are newtons. Units of run are also newtons. And that's going to do something to our units. But before we do that, let's talk about the for every statement for our slope. Right? Remember, every slope is a rate of change. It's how much one variable changes when you change the other. So for every one newton in normal force, we get whatever your slope was, newtons, of kinetic friction. For every 1 newton increase in the normal force, the force of kinetic friction increases by that many newtons. It's telling you how much friction increases when you increase the normal force. But there is something kind of special about that slope. Well, a couple of things. First off, the units actually cancel. So traditionally, when we report or use this slope, we use it without any units. It doesn't mean those units aren't there. Awful hard to interpret this without the units, right, to write the for every statement. So in that sense, it's kind of like our very first uh, slope, which was circumference and diameter of a circle, and we got pi. Right? Technically, pi means for every one centimeter of diameter, you get 3.14 centimeters of circumference. But we tend to cancel those units out, and we just talk about pi as a number. Well, same kind of thing here. Right? The x variable is what we graph on the x-axis. That's the normal force. And the y-intercept, sure enough, is less than 5% of your maximum frictional force. Right? And also logically, should be 0, because that would mean in this case that when there's no normal force, there's no friction. So hopefully that makes sense, because think about what this means. If there's no normal force, it means the surfaces aren't actually touching. And if they're touching, how can they rub against one another to end up with friction? Now, that might seem you know hard to think about, but what if instead of a track, we used an air track, right, that blew a little cushion of air, but played air hockey, something like that, right, like the hover puck we used? Um, if it was riding on a little cushion of air, right, maybe it would be frictionless, and so we could deal with it that way, or extremely smooth surfaces somehow. Right, so 
With that being said, right, there's our math model. But now let's check out the, uh, the slopes, right? And in particular, what effect did it have that half of the tables had a tray that had cork on your track and half of you had a tray that had plastic on the track, different surfaces? Well, let's look at the results. So over here, we've got slopes for cork on track and over here, plastic on track. And as we go down, you can see that definitely they're different. I mean, look at these, the cork on the track, and look at the plastic on the track. Think about it, I hope it kind of makes sense. Right? There was more friction for every Newton of normal force with cork on the track than there was with plastic on the track. Average of about 0.3 and 0.17-ish. Right? So definitely much more friction with the cork than there was with the plastic. But notice what that did. That different surface didn't change the shape of the graph. It still would was linear, went through 0, 0. Didn't change the relationship. What it changed was the slope. So perhaps the slope has to do with the types of surfaces. Each type of or combination of surfaces might have a different slope. right? And that would be a handy thing to know because then you could predict an amount of friction. So this is a very important little number in terms of friction. This is what we call the coefficient of kinetic friction. Remember, kinetic means moving. Um, the concept builder guy calls this sliding friction, right? But kinetic friction. The symbol we use is a little different. It's a Greek letter, mu, lowercase mu, with a subscript of k. Now, mu is not an m. Okay, it looks more like a U with a little tail on the front. A U with a tail on the front is mu. Okay, if, if this is too small for you to see well, you know, Google what mu looks like, lowercase mu. And then the subscript K just means it's kinetic friction, means we're talking about something where the surfaces are actually moving against one another. Okay, there is another type called static, all right, that we're going to talk about in another movie, if the surfaces aren't moving with respect to one another. Okay, so operationally, we can define the coefficient of kinetic friction, mu sub k, as being the slope of a graph of kinetic friction versus normal force. But more conceptually, it tells you about kind of the types of surfaces and how much friction there are because of the types of surfaces. Every combination of surfaces will have a different coefficient. The more friction there is because of the types of surfaces, the rougher the surfaces are, if you will, right? then the more friction there's going to be for every Newton of normal force. In other words, the bigger the slope or coefficient will be. Rougher surfaces have bigger coefficients. Small, uh, uh, smoother surfaces right, have smaller coefficients. If the coefficient was zero, that would mean absolutely no friction. Right, at all. So frictionless surfaces, which we sometimes idealize to here in physics to make our lives easy. Right? So we could say there's no friction at all. Frictionless surface. Perfect, you know, rolling wheels or or on ice or an air track kind of situation. Okay. Um, usually coefficients of kinetic friction are below one. Right? There's some little fraction, basically. But they're gonna tell us how we can then calculate an amount of friction based on the normal force. So, if we plug that in, we get our general math model for kinetic friction. Okay, the amount of friction between two surfaces that are moving with respect to another, with respect to one another, is the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. Now, this equation looks fairly simple, except remember that finding a normal force can be tricky. In the easier situations, the normal force is just balanced by gravity. Gravity is mg, and we can find the normal force pretty quickly. But you've seen situations, certainly, with forces at angles or on inclines and things like that, where finding the normal force can be a little bit trickier. Now, by the way, this is why I often asked you to find the normal force in this unit and also in the uh, balanced forces unit. You might have thought, well, why is he asking us to find it other than it was one of the forces on our force diagram. It's because I knew that the normal force was going to come into play 
when we dealt with friction. And so it's important that you be able to calculate it along the way. But that can make the equations a little more complex. So think of this equation as something we can use in a problem, like we can use force of gravity or weight is mass times gravitational field strength is mg. We can now use kinetic friction is mu k times the normal force. And so over the next few days, what we're going to be doing is looking at more complex situations with Newton's second law, some of which will have kinetic friction.